We're making a cheddar and green onion waffle grilled cheese with bacon and fried chicken. Tell me that doesn't sound amazing, bitches. And of course you know when I say bitches, I mean that in the most loving way possible. It's true. It's a term of endearment for us. It's a term of endearment for us. Unlike when my father would refer to the family as you people. That was not a term of endearment. That was a term of you people. I think he felt separate from us. I think the man grew up in a loveless home. Well, I know he did, pretty much. You know this? Talk about going down a rabbit That's hole. starting on a high note. I'm going to tell you something, and this is 100% true. My grandparents, my father's parents, had two children. My father and his brother, Bob. My grandparents never saw each other naked. Made two children. Lived their lives together. Never saw each other naked. Max is... This why? Why did I share that why or why did that... It? I don't know. I don't know why I shared that. But look, this is the stuff that you get here that you... you would you see Babish telling you uh, something like that or Guga? Only if he could dry age his grandparents then. And Weissman, please. They don't tell you these things. They're just yelling food orders at you. Okay, here's the order. Get our chicken uh, brining, marinating. Waffle mix, little sauce. Bob's your uncle. My uncle, actually. Ugh. Wait, redo. No, I want that not to. So much more exciting. Okay, hold on. There we go. Yeah, that's the one. That's a chicken breast. That there, you'd recognize the chicken breast in a Ziploc bag. I'm going to flatten it. So, you know, I want you to see what I'm doing most of the time. I think a little oil makes it uh, less likely to shred up or something. But I want this guy pretty flat. So, there we go. Remember I said I want it thin. And I want it about the size of the waffles. And that's... That's pretty good. Okay, now well, here's what we do. We're making this just like we would normally make a uh, piece of fried chicken. So first we start with some buttermilk with which to marinate this or brine it kinda. Buttermilk goes in all thick and delicious. Nice. And we're at a couple things. One of them's gonna be some Cholula hot sauce, cause I love it. And the other, pickle juice. You'd be surprised at how great that is. We mix, take this out. And we put in our chicken, trying to keep it in this one big flat ass piece. This is the tender that came off. No big, gentle Sammy boy. Oh, it's ripping a bit. Just get in, just get in. I'll take care of you. If they have to be done in pieces, they'll be done in pieces. Might as well throw that kid in. Once this is in, we're good. You can stick that in the fridge, come back to it in an hour or so, and we carry on. Okay, sauce time. We begin some Japanese mayonnaise. Doesn't have to be. Look, if you got regular mayonnaise, use it. But I'm telling you, you're making a mistake. Japanese mayonnaise is best, and some maple syrup, tiny bit of salt and pepper, and then some smoked paprika. How good that's gonna be? Do you know how good this is gonna be? Do you? Are you kidding me? The Max used to say that all the time when he was questioning things and it wasn't going the way he wanted. He'd look at us and go, are you kidding me? Remember that? I do. Yeah. <laughs> Little taste. You see, what you got going on here is you got the savory of the mayo, you got the sweet of the syrup, and you got the spice and the smokiness of that smoked paprika. <laughs> that. If this is the only thing you got out of this episode. Oh, I call it an episode. Max calls it a, a what, a video. If this is the only thing you get out of this video. Episode you'd be ahead of the game. Uh, now, the waffle mix. So I'm just using Bisquick because it's easy and kind of quick, and they got a perfect recipe for waffles right on the back. So it starts with two cups of the Bisquick mix. That looks like one. Come on. Hold for. Do you remember when I said easy? What the hell? <sighs> Shit. Okay, two. Right, now, one and a third cups of milk, two tablespoons of oil, one egg. I'll give this egg a little beat right here. Oh, God. Oh, my. What the fuck? hell it's all over me oh man this will be the one episode that somebody from the food network wants to tune in and watch and they'll go oh we don't like him and we'll go good we don't like you either well, fuck the food network. f you food network and fuck you too guy fieri no and i don't know no we're not saying that no. <laughs> this is the components for the waffle mix on the back and now you let it sit and it would thicken up a bit. Okay, but here's what we're gonna add. I'm now gonna grate in some sharp white cheddar, maybe half a cup. No idea what this is gonna look like. Let's see, that's not a half. Okay, good, I like that. Maybe a half, three quarters of a cup. And then I've got about a third of a cup of green onions, I promised them, and in they go. You mix this, oh glorious. All right, we're just gonna let this sit. I can't wait to make these waffles. Everything's prepped. I'm gonna clean up a bit. We'll pretend that the chicken marinated longer than it really will. It's still gonna be delicious. And then we'll make the waffles first, then the chicken, because you're still grilled cheesing-esque this thing. So at some point, you're gonna need your waffle, your chicken, the cheese, and all that on the flat top, because you want the cheese to melt and get delicious. All right, 
the waffle iron is, oh, it's very hot. So we give it a spray because we do not want our waffles to stick. And then we ladle in and I've never known how much to put in. So I feel like I need like almost two of these ladles. Like I would rather it be too big than too small, right? We shut and we turn. And now we wait. When this little blue light comes on, tells us it's ready, it's ready. So stand by, it's gonna be great. All right, we're there. So turn it back, open it up. Come on, buddy. Remember what I said about not sticking? Oh, beautiful. All right, put this kid here. I make one more, then we're frying our chicken. Here we go. You understand the system here, right? The chicken's gonna go in the flour, then into the egg, then into the flour, and then into the oil. So let's season up our flour first. We're gonna give it some garlic powder. It's really like a decent amount, you know? Onion powder, nice amount. Salt and pepper, a big ass pinch, and then we'll mix this. Nice. What are those Japanese sand garden things that like you- Zen garden? Yeah, that you really, you know, you make lines and it's very soothing. Okay, eggs. One, I think I only need two without shell, please. Thank you. I'll mix these. Perfecto. Now, my chicken is in here, but before I put the chicken into the flour for the first time, I'm gonna take some of this buttermilk nonsense and just get it in here. This is gonna help make the chicken a little craggier, and craggier chicken does one thing. It gives good little craggy edges. See these little bits now are gonna stick and make this a better piece of chicken than if we hadn't done this. Okay, and here's how we start. So I'm gonna try and get the chicken out in this one blanketable piece. So I'm shaking off the excess and then we'll go straight into the flour. That's pretty good. Coat well both sides. See these little bits right here? That's the point of adding that, that uh, buttermilk to the flour to start. You want to be coated well. And we always say that flour helps the egg stick and then the egg helps the flour stick. So we're gonna make one more trip back into the flour. And then, okay, everybody's coated here. Boys, I say let's just go right from this into the oil. I'll see you on the other side. The oil's hot, we're ready. So we'll pick this guy up gently. I really wanna keep them together. One piece and we'll put it in and lay it away from us. Just like that, fantastic. So this is not gonna take long. It's gonna be, uh, you know, maybe five minutes. Total. And there's a couple other pieces over here. So it ripped a little bit. And there's a couple other little pieces here that, that I'll do after. Those will be snacks for uh, me and the boys. So we're gonna cook this till it's golden on one side, then give it a little flip. It's starting. All right, it's been about a minute and a half. We just have a little peek here. Oh, I don't wanna bust it. It's hard to do this. Can you see there, Max? Oh, it's beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna give this a turn and not Scold Max in the process. There we go. Look, don't always need a deep fryer. If I'm doing a bunch of stuff, I'm happy to use it, but clearly you don't need one. You just need a cooking guy, 12 inch cast iron pan, that's all you need. That'll complete your life. This would be the perfect size. Swag. All right, so my guy's ready. Let's take him out carefully. A little bit, the excess drip. Then I'll put them on here. That's gonna be perfect in our waffle. All right, I'll do the other couple pieces in case we need them for patch purposes, and then we're getting close. Let me hit you with a hard, cold fact. Two out of three men will develop hair loss before the age of 35 years old. Of the 3.2-ish million subscribers to our channel, 80% are guys, about a million seven of you are developing hair loss. That's the bad news. The good news is you can do something about it. But now's the time to start. And the answer to all of this is a company called Keeps. I take it. This is what comes from them. I am losing my hair, there's no question about it. But I'm losing way less hair and I'm hanging on to more of it because of this stuff. Keeps is a subscription service that helps men keep their hair. You deal with an actual doctor. This is not some made up BS stuff. This is FDA approved. Science in bottles, no pharmacies, no waiting rooms. They've got 24 seven expert support. And I don't know why, because it's as simple as doom, doom, and you're done. And proven results because most Keeps customers notice results within six months. Hair loss stops with Keeps. So to get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com slash Sam. That's keeps.com slash Sam. Or click the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash S-A-M. Okay, so here's my thinking. The problem is, is if I try and build it here, 
like this. The cheese is never gonna melt before these things burn up. So I'm gonna start warming the chicken up a little bit and the waffles a little bit and the bacon that I uh, made earlier that you didn't need to see me make because we've done bacon before. I'm just telling you, you do it on a rack on a baking sheet about 400 degrees and it comes out like this, perfectly crispy and flat. So these are warming. And now the point of the chicken, which is still a little bit warm, is to now melt the cheese on it. So we'll do these guys. It's very tricky putting cheese on something like this because you want to see it melt, but you want to make sure that you still get to see what the hell is underneath it. Now I'm ready to do this, but I'm going to put a little water to help steam it a bit. And that will look like this. Now we're melting inside, underneath the dome, underneath the pleasure dome, and then everything will be perfect when we're done. The pleasure dome. The pleasure dome. <laughs> and perfection. Let's take everything off. Waffles will go here, the bacon I'll get. The chicken I don't want to take off yet because I want it to go straight from the flat top to the waffle. So boys, you come over here. Let's build, let's eat, and let's be happy. Okay, here's what we're doing. We've got our bottom waffle. We've got our sauce, which by the way, we all just tasted. And we're like, oh snap, what is happening here? We know what's happening. It's just straight deliciousness. We're being generous. Aren't we? I mean, it's thick, right? We're only gonna put it on one side, so. Don't be an Allen. Don't be an Allen, so get your sauce, beautiful. Now, remember our bacon? We got bacon that we just want to get everywhere. We want a nice, big, wide swath of bacon covering this whole thing. All right, now here comes our chicken. Come on, chicken. Chicken's down. Oh, snap! I knew this was gonna be good. And now, we got a top bun, and we come in like this. There you go. Okay, I got nothing except, uh, holy shit. Look what we've created. Wow, I'm digging this. Here's what I like. I like that the chicken, while crispy, a little bit on the outside is tender on the inside, but you've got this crispy waffle on top. Then you've got the bacon and the sauce underneath. And the only thing to do would be cut it into four pieces, right? Cause I can't pick the damn thing up. So let's do that. We'll start here. There's a cross section. It's a beautiful cross section of this kid. I think it's impressive. I'm impressed. Oh, that's beautiful. All right, and again. <laughs> Shit ass, come on. Come on, son. Dang, this is gonna be good. I'm going right here in the corner. I'm taking a corner bite. I generally don't go corner, but I'm going corner. This is the corner, it has me written all over it. But before I do, I just want a little bit more of the sauce, because I know. Chicken and waffles, grilled cheese with bacon. What the? Chicken and green onion and white cheddar waffles with bacon. Oh, shit. Sorry. I don't like to do two bites, but. Yeah, you do. You always do two bites. <laughs> when it's this good, you only need one quarter for yourself. This will serve four. Have something else with it. I don't know, don't ask me what else. You could always have like a salad. I'm serious, salad's good. I don't know if it goes with this. Coleslaw would go with this. Yeah, yeah, now you're talking. Okay, well, if you keep sitting there, you can't go and make this or something else, so off you go.